How are you, Kevin? I am good, yes. You are very fit. So are you a big fan of Charm? This is Greg Vaughn, aka Dan Gordon. You're listening to Words of Witches. Your Charmed area is now my sanitizer area. Okay, well. I can't even get to my little, uh, I don't know if you can see, I have like uh, my Charmed area there. The three little monkeys. We have a P3 neon sign over here. Yeah. That's amazing. I didn't even have one of those. Yeah, Word of the Witches sounds like a great title and a great idea. This is Finola Hughes, and you're listening to Words of the Witches, a charmed podcast. Keep up the good work. You're looking good. Yes. Thank you. you haven't even read that? Wait, what are you doing with the book? So he has the confidence to finish the story. Hear now the words of the witches. This is Kevin, and welcome to Words of the Witches, the Charmed podcast that will guide you through the lesser-known published material in the Charmed universe and decide how it fits into the grand narrative of the TV series. Oh my goodness gracious! This is the beginning of Season 2, the introduction to Season 2 of Words of the Witches, where we start the comics! And this is an introduction to the comics, but I am not alone. (laughs) I have somebody to join with me. Hi, Sean! (laughs) <laughs> Hi, Kevin. I'm so excited to embark on a new project with my girl. <laughs> yes. So Sean will be my co-host while we cover the comics, and it's going to be a whole new journey. We first started working together, I guess, a year and a half ago. <laughs> wow. It's only a year and a half ago? <laughs> I know. It feels like five years now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And I told Kevin, um, I see us at like 80, like addicted to podcasting together, still like talking about stuff. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So, but in case people who don't know you and are listening for the first time, tell us all about Sean. (laughs) <laughs> oh, I love talking about myself. It's yeah. my favorite subject. <laughs> so um, I embarked on a journey on the podcast Brunch with the Hollowells to watch Charmed in its entirety for my first time. So now that, uh, you know, brunch, something happened there. I joined up with Kevin from season six to season eight on Charmed to finish out my story. So now I've watched the whole series for the first time. And now I'm going to start reading the comics with Kevin to continue that journey. But outside of Charmed, I'm a huge X-Men and comic book fan. Um, Yeah, I'm a nerd of just about everything. I like to say I'm a nerd for everything except for Twilight. Never Twilight. I don't like Twilight. (laughs) (laughs) I only saw the first movie and that was enough for me. I'm like... (laughs) That was enough. (laughs) Yeah, I never read anything. never saw anything past the first movie, so... <laughs> I actually did read the books because we had them. Rachel, my best friend, and I had them with us on our trip to the UK. So we read through all the books and we <laughs> complained about them the whole time. <laughs> like, is this real? Is this what's happening? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but yeah, That's I also so like to uh, write and draw, which I've been getting back into that world lately. Yes, drawing all of the new pictures for our Solving for X podcast that we do together too. Yes, plug. <laughs> <laughs> so for this episode, we're actually going to be talking about the comics, but not any issue per se. It's just going to be like just introducing you to what the comics were and how they came to be and the process of that. So, yeah, just getting you set up. And then I'll talk about what our comic episodes will kind of look like at the end. So, OK, cool. Cool. So let's get into it. So. The Charmed Comics is the canonical continuation. Canonical. Canonical. <laughs> so while we, when we covered the novels, they weren't officially canon, but <laughs> these ones are supposed to be like a direct continuation and a direct canonical thing. We'll see if there's any errors in these as we go, too. But, mm. It was published by Zenoscope Entertainment. It was published monthly, so it come out once a month. And when they, after the issues were done, they did volumes. So they did the, the, the paperback volumes of them, too. And there's... There's seven volumes of collected that issues. That rhymes with Kevin. It does. Oh. So, <laughs> but I actually have all the individual issues and all the volumes. <laughs> wow. Of course you do. <laughs> I don't have every variant because a lot of these issues had alternate covers, like mm-hmm. multiple different covers. Well, you know comics, you know the jail. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so lots of the things of those. Um, but the news was made official about the comics happening. On March 15th, 2010, but Zenoscope had already put ads in several comics and one artist had released the test drawings earlier before that. 
So there was like, ooh, teasing. Alyssa Milano also informed Charmed fans of this news when she tw- twittered, twittered, tweeted, <laughs> 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 when she tweeted that a comic was in the making. Um, and the Ralph Tedesco, the editor in chief of Zenoscope, said, the process definitely took a little while and was in the works for well over a year. We were discussing all the potential storylines and details with CBS for quite some time, and they also needed to make sure the lead actresses were all okay with us using their likenesses, which we'll get into that a little bit later in this episode. Uh, (laughs) The main thing was that we all wanted to make sure this was something we were going to do right, so we didn't want to rush anything. So Ralph Tedesco. Mm. That's cool that at least they wanted to do it in a way that would please not only the actresses, but the fans. Yeah, they wanted to be respectful, and I think they that was they never. I never felt like they were trying to disrespect us or do something bad. So, yeah, good. And also from Mr. Ralph, early on, uh, he said the series starts off about a year or so after the end of the last season. The sisters are each off living their lives. They have had their well-deserved happily ever after. But what they don't realize is that there might have been some serious consequences for vanquishing all that evil. Something is brewing in the underworld. Something big. Uh, that's from Raven Gregory, the Xenoscope author. Yeah, so he, Raven Gregory was an author for the Xenoscope brand for a bunch of their stuff before. And he stepped on to help out with this one. I guess he helped write stuff and was kind of on for the first beginning of the comics. From... Ralph Tedesco, the Zenoscope editor-in-chief, he says the key to the series' success is to strike a nice balance in creating a brand new intriguing storyline for fans of the television show while also not alienating Zenoscope and comic book readers who haven't really followed it before but might want to know that it's a comic. The great thing is that Paul and Raven have done just that with this story arc. Anybody will be able to pick up this series and follow it whether or not they ever watched the show before. Moreover, fans of the show are going to be thrilled when they see where this story goes. (laughs) I think I know why. (laughs) Yeah, so it's nice that they want to include both longtime fans and new people that might be introducing it, be introduced to it. So... Yeah, and it's interesting this this trend that we're on because most of the Joss Whedon shows got this comic book treatment also where it continues yeah. the seasons in comic yeah. book form. When asked if they had 12 issues planned, Paul Ruditis, who I remember this name, Kevin, because he wrote some of the charm books. <laughs> he did. He's a very popular guy. I was I usually say Ruditis, but... Okay, Ruditis. Okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> well... This guy, Paul, (laughs) he responded, that depends on your definition of the word planned. We started out with an initial arc of five issues that were pretty set before we even wrote one page of the first comic book. But we hope that arc is just the beginning of something bigger. We have plans that can take us in several directions depending on Zenoscope's and CBS's approvals. The fan response and what we decide will ultimately work best for the line. So that was all the early development. Now we'll get into like real development. (laughs) So rumors of the comic series began long before Xenoscope made the news official um, and speculation had started to appear online about the possibility of a comic series when test sketches of the girls came on Dave Hoover's DeviantArt account. And I remember this. I was a DeviantArt member. I had a DeviantArt and I was always getting like charmed stuff. I'm like, what are these drawings? What is this Dave <laughs> Hoover person? Oh, and so it's cool that I'm like, I remember this. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> and Dave Hoover, he drew some stuff with the girls and he, Hoover, Hoover said that if everything goes according to plan, I'll be working on a charmed comic book based on the hit TV series. Uh, and then to get the job, I had to complete, had to compete with others vying for the same gig. And our task was to model sheets of the girls showing how we would draw them. The art would be approved by the studio. The odd thing about this was that they supplied no photo reference. <laughs> so I searched <laughs> the internet high and low looking for the best possible pictures of the three girls. I thought Alyssa Milano would be the easiest to draw, but she turned out to be the hardest. <laughs> she sort of changed her look more often than the others, other two, Rose McGowan and Holly Marie Combs. So that's what he said in 2009 on DeviantArt. I'm like, that's so funny. 
<laughs> That's funny. I think I've heard that before that Alyssa was hard for another artist to draw. So yeah, I guess there's just something about her. And you know what? Like <laughs> someone posted on uh, Facebook about my podcast and like, as anyone listening to this and then someone commented on it, it's like, why, why do artists always make Alyssa's head so ugly? <laughs> they can never draw this. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> so they're complaining about the drawing. I'm like, you know, I don't know why she's difficult, but her beauty is just can't be captured. You know, it can't be captured. It's elusive. She was cursed with beauty that cannot be transcribed. Right. <laughs> Well, Kevin, months before the title had officially been announced and before Xenoscope gained acquisition of the publication rights for the comic series, the first advertisement for the series featured... Advertisement? The same- <laughs> advertisement? <laughs> Put advertisement in the paper? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The first advertisement for the series featuring the famous Triquetra symbol and the tagline, The Girls Are Back, written in the series font, appeared in the December 16, 2009 issue of the Xenoscope comic book, Escape from Wonderland, number three. I didn't know that was a comic book. <laughs> yeah, they have all kinds of fairy tale, like, well, slutty fairy tale comics. Oh, I've seen those. I just didn't mm-hmm. know it was them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's, like, a statue of the slutty Cinderella, like, half in transformation to her dress. But, like, you get to see, like, her undergarments. I mean, that's, <laughs> like, that doesn't look very Disney. That's what Zenoscope is so known for. Like, strong women, but also, like, very scantily clad, almost wearing nothing women. But it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> At least they're strong. Yeah. However, Xenoscope did not officially announce possession of the title until the company had successfully been granted the rights from Fox Consumer Products. Wow, so Fox owns it too. Apparently. Hmm. Subsequently, that came out a little funny. Subsequently. A little country <laughs> western, yeah. 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 <laughs> The first press release from Xenoscope Entertainment indicated that Charmed, based on the ultra-popular media franchise, would be a natural addition to the publisher's pre-existing, sultry, and strong female characters. (laughs) She's sultry. (laughs) Editor-in-chief Ralph Tedesco also announced that the key to the series' success is to strike a nice balance in creating a brand new intriguing storyline for fans of the television show, while also not alienating Xenoscope and comic book readers who haven't really followed it before. It is further announced that while the TV series had a difficult time due to casting and budget limitations, the comic creators would not have those problems. Plus, or thus, <laughs> fans may finally see the return of popular characters like Qua, Prue, and Cole. What? What? <laughs> what will happen with these characters in the comics? I do not know, but I do. But shush. Okay. <laughs> Will they be sultry? They might be. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so the next step was getting the rights. It took Xenoscope about a year to get all the rights, including the right to use the actress's likenesses. Alyssa, Holly, and Rose all agreed to their likenesses being used. Later on, it became clear that various other notable charmed actors had allowed their likenesses to be used, including Ooh. Brian Krause. Ivan Sergey, Victor Webster, <laughs> Julian McMahon, the correct way to say it, Dorian Gregory, <laughs> Fanola Hughes, <laughs> Jennifer Rhodes, Whoa. James Reed, Scott Ooh. Jake. Do you remember who Scott Jake is? No, that's the first one I didn't recognize. <laughs> that, uh, that was uh, Sam. Page oh, page. okay, okay. Kaylee Cuoco and Rebecca Balding. Aww. Alyssa Milano was very excited. She's like, uh, she said on her comment, I guess this was the tweet she made. Uh, well, I approved some of the artwork for the rendition of my character, and it looks awesome. I'm very excited. A show like Charmed has been such a lovely part of my life simply because the fans have been so loyal. That's why we were on the air for as long as we were, on a network that wasn't bringing in great numbers at the time. So I think that anything to continue the legacy that we had is awesome. Everything is awesome. <laughs> great. Now that's in my head all day. <laughs> 
Upon much questioning from fans and whether Shannon Doherty's likeness would appear in the comics, Xenoscope issued the following statement. Unfortunately, Ms. Doherty has declined to be involved in the comic version of Charmed. This includes the use of her likeness. We would hope she would allow us to use her image and that we would be able to bring her into the Charmed comic book exactly as she was in the show, but at this point, that has become impossible. While Ms. Doherty's likeness will not be used for the character, we are still very excited about the direction we are going with Prue, and we hope that fans of Charmed will feel the same way. So how do you feel about that? Were you expecting that? No, because I know you kind of shared that she's in it, and it says here she's in it. So, like, she's in it, just not looking like Prue? Right. Okay. Um, yes, and they, well, when we get to it, we'll get to it, because they do kind of explain it. There, It does remind me of a little bit of X-Men storyline in a lot of ways, but... Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think I know. <clears throat> But, uh, yeah, and I was always going to be like, why? Because, like, like, why can't they just use her? And um, Shannon Dory responded to this. Oh. Shannon, oh. Dory, Shannon Dory revealed at Oz Comic Con in 2013 that her decision to not give her permission for her likeness to be used was based on Xenoscope's unwillingness to pay her for her likeness. That gives me mixed feelings because it sounds like so did they do you know if they paid the other sisters for their likeness right i don't know okay like i would assume that they would have to be paid if they're going to be used and so why why would you want to pay the other ones and not shannon you know and if yeah and if they're not paying the other ones then shannon would be like i don't know i feel like at this point there's still some kind of bad blood in the water you know yeah because i mean there is the aspect that Prue is so popular because Shannon played her the way she did. Mm -hmm. So yeah, she should get credit, but at the same time in the comic for them using her likeness, she's not doing anything above and beyond. So right. I mean, she's <laughs> all she has to be like, yeah, you can use it. It's fine. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then, yeah, just get paid for it doing nothing. So it's kind of like, you know, if I probably want to get paid something, but it wouldn't have to be a lot if it was me. I mean, just something small. Yeah. Well, yeah, and there's also the backlash because then I wonder what people would feel about me as an actor if I'm not allowing my character to live on some way. So I don't yeah. know. It's a very it's complicated tricky. thing. It's tricky. Yeah. And it's funny because she finally did allow her likeness to be used. She did approve um, Mego, you know, those Mego dolls, them to use oh, it yeah. for that. And then they sucked <laughs> badly. She's like, I finally let them use my likeness. And then that's what they make. <laughs> <laughs> they're so bad kevin they don't even look like that it's so bad and i have them just for my collection but i'm like oh these are horrible <laughs> if you get a chance book orders to go on to our hanging with the hollowells um instagram i put a picture of the dolls that i have um, viper's boob is full on out and like <laughs> i don't know they look so funny <laughs> <laughs> so i'm like oh, if only you approved it for the comics this would not happen so much but whatever wait is it book orders or spell orders spell orders spell orders damn it it's close <laughs> either i just said book order i'm like so you have book orders i think someone's ordering a book but okay <laughs> but yeah so that was always unfortunate but at least prue is in it you know her her essence is in it so yeah I'm, and I have stuff to talk about when we get to when we get through them. I have stuff to talk about. So. Okay. <laughs> well, before we get through them, Kevin, would you like to know about the writing and the format of these comics? Oh yes. Author Paul R. <laughs> <laughs> Ruditus, Ruditus, so, yeah. was hired as lead writer of season nine with established Zenoscope author Raven Gregory co-writing the first three issues alongside him. Paul was already familiar with the Charmed Universe, having previously published three tie-in novels, two official episode guides, co-authored with Diana G. Gallagher. Kevin, I know that name. She wrote a lot of books, too. Yes, she did. <laughs> and see, I listened to your show. Oh, thank you, girl. <laughs> and the Charmed Book of Love Spells. Ruditus Aww. and Gregory also <laughs> co Huh? Aw. I, I said Paul. Paul. <laughs> there's, there's that name again. <laughs> Paul. Paul. <laughs> and Gregory also co-authored a special issue zero, which acted as a prequel. 
to the series by summarizing the events of the television series in a style reminiscent to the Book of Shadows depicted in the show. For season 10, Pat Shand assumed the role of writer and Paul acted as editor. <laughs> Artist David Hoover, or Dave Hoover, was hired to create the interior artwork. While David Se- Seidman, Side- Seidman, 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 David was hired to design the covers for the comics. Although various guest artists have contributed variant covers for each issue, including Greg Horn and Al Rio, Tony Shastine. These names, Kevin. These names. <laughs> And Mark Sparacio. <laughs> <laughs> All these artists. All these artists and their French names. I want them to paint me like them French girls. Oh, yes. The world is full of motherfucking artists. <laughs> <laughs> hey, artists, you got a dollar? <laughs> I know that's true. <laughs> yeah. I can't remember what it's called, but I just remembered since it's September, I have to pay my rent. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hoover departed the series after completing issue three. Since then, various artists have been hired to create the interior artwork, such as Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> you can skip them. You can skip them. I'll try. Such as, it. Other, such as other artists. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Since then, other artists have been hired to create the interior artwork. CBS and Zenoscope officially reached an agreement for a 10th season. It was announced in April 2014 that Paul stepped down as lead writer and would edit the series while Pat Shand would write the new story and Eliza Felice would be penciling. The first issue of Charm Season 10 debuted at New York Comic Con during the weekend of October 9th, 2014. Yeah, so... It's interesting that it switched writers for the new season. And some people hate season nine and like season 10. I was going to ask you about that, if it's like a noticeable difference, but I guess that answers it. I guess it is. <laughs> I mean, it, it really depends on what people are looking for. I mean, I, I just based off what I've seen other people talk about. So, but we'll see. We'll see how I, because I've only read through the comics once. So while mm. I kind of remember like general storylines, there's gonna be a lot that I'm like, I don't, recall because it's only one read through through so although the process of writing and receiving studio clearance was much of the same for the charmed novels Rudicus explains the big difference now is that with original episodes no longer airing we have a lot more freedom than we did on the novels with the charmed novels nothing outrageous could occur to distort established continuity stories had to take place between episodes usually in the first half of a given season Rudicus notes that while the studio still has to approve the direction we take no longer does everything have to be reset by the end. <laughs> that alone means that nothing is entirely safe. Ruditus and Gregory claimed they wanted the series to grow and evolve in the new medium, expanding upon what worked and what didn't work. The creators believed it stands out from the Buffy, Angel, and Pushing Daisies television to comic adaptations because Charm has a unique focus on the dynamics of family drama. <sighs> See, I love that. Here they have flexibility to like really play. <laughs> according to shant the comics and novels based on the franchise were part of the charmed canon and follows the established continuity of the series yeah and i've talked to pet shant too um and Pat, yeah he's he, he's just like yes all these they're canon i don't care they're gonna be canon. <laughs> <laughs> nice it's like they all tie into each other because i i know that pat shant when he started writing season 10 he would actually um talk to paul about um how he wrote Tyler in the Brewing Storm, even even the novel. He's like, I want to stay true to how you wrote him in there, too, and how you wrote him in the comics. So that's That's pretty cool. (laughs) Yeah. So the reaction to the comics, critical reaction was initially mixed for the first issue, with many reviewers complaining about the lack of story. (laughs) (laughs) Reviews for issue number two in relation to the story have been much more positive, uh, with Fandomania awarding the issue three out of five. However, some noted that the issue does a good job at exposing the series to newcomers. The artwork, however, has received the most criticism, both for the characters' likenesses and the coloring, which is deemed distracting by Newsarama reviewer. And what's interesting about the artwork is because while the first three start with the same people drawing, after that, the artwork changes. So that can be a little bit distracting because the artwork will change from issue to issue Mm, sometimes. I can see that. It's like, is this the same? Does this go together? So 
we'll hmm. get to that when we get to that too. <laughs> Christina Flores of ComicImpact.com goes on to say that the interior art is inconsistent, oh, with the character drawings not being as good as those of locations and backgrounds. However, she does go on to say that Ruditus and Gregory open with a strong story and say that Charmed fans will enjoy the issue. Fan response, however, has been promising, with the first issue selling out of its initial 17,000 copies in the first three weeks, which prompted Zenoscope to release a second printing in time for the release of issue number two. Wow, so Charm keeps breaking those barriers. Yeah, yeah. So it's going to be cool. Uh, what are you expecting from the comics? I know you got a little bit of spoilers when we talked about the show, but yeah, general thoughts, I guess. Um, the thing that excites me the most that we read about is kind of expanding or fixing certain things from within the show. So like... I'd like to see more of the storylines that we want more of, like explored more in the comics, uh, see characters pop up, but also I'd like to see like the Christy and Billy story expanded on. Cause I feel like there's so many holes in that story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Cool. I'm excited. Well, this comes out the same day as issue zero. So we'll be recording issue zero which you everyone can listen to right now. <laughs> but, yay! Uh, yay! Um, but that's going to be a little bit different because the issue zero is more of like an, a reintroduction, like a recap of everything that happened in the show. And, you know, it serves as a guide for people who might not know the show. So they kind of introduce people to the concepts and the family and everything. So we're, that would be like a nice little recap for all of us. So I like that. That'll be fun. Then when we get to the actual, starting from issue one, we'll be going page by page descriptions ha, page oh, by page page by page um, <laughs> and that we kind of go off because the, with the novels i just had to summarize obviously i'm not going to read the whole book to somebody so <laughs> <laughs> and here we're not gonna i'm not gonna read the comic either but you will we will spend some time at each page and just describe the story of what's happening and some of the pictures and things like that so i think that'll be fun i do have some fun new segments that will be there Ooh. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna have a ranking system so we're going to have to rank each issue. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, not not with letter grades, but I have like fun, like witchy grading terms. <laughs> I take no issue with that. Yeah, and then I do plan on having like, kind of what we do with Solving for X is having polls uh, at the end oh, of every fine. episode. So yeah, uh, we'll get to that when we get to that. I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I guess that we're done with this episode. Continue on to the issue zero. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, where can people find you besides this show, Sean? Well, they can find me on the marvelous galaxy of Disney, where we cover Star Wars, Disney, and Marvel News Weekly, or on Once Upon a Cult, where every other week we choose a cult and we talk about it. Talk about it, Janet, or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about it, Janet. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, and you know, this is the start of season two, the start of something new. Oh my goodness gracious. You can find me here, Words of the Witches, on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, or Words of Witches on Twitter, uh, or wherever you are. <laughs> John, wherever Sean is, I'll pretty much be there in some form or another. <laughs> yeah. Or you can follow my personal Instagram, KGZ87. All right. Yay, peoples! Oh my god! Yay. <laughs> Your destiny still awaits, I guess. 